Robert's lechway is an extinct subspecies of lechway. It was found around Kawamba in Zambia, but no populations now survive. The Atlas bear was Africa's only native bear that survived into modern times. Once inhabiting the Atlas Mountains and neighboring areas, from Morocco to Libya, the animal is now thought to be extinct. The decline of the Atlas bear can be partly attributed to the Roman Empire. As the empire expanded into northern Africa, the Romans intensely hunted and captured the Atlas bear and many other animals and used them as sport for many of their games. This went on for centuries, during which time thousands of bears were used in the arenas to fight against gladiators, lions, tigers and other animals. They were cruelly treated, often starved and malnourished to increase their desperation, and hence their aggression, within the arena. It became extinct shortly after modern firearms were developed. Overhunting may have contributed to their decline. Pressure from zoo collectors sealed their fate, with the animals being taken away from one another and unable to reproduce and flourish. It finally became extinct in the late 19th century, the last one recorded to be killed by hunters was in 1870. Human activity can definitely be said to have played a large role in pushing the extinction of the Atlas bear. The red gazelle was thought to be an extinct species of gazelle. There are no records of the red gazelle in the wild. It is known from three specimens purchased in markets in the late 19th century. The center of its face is bordered on both sides by pale streaks running from the eyes to the snout. It has a rufous tail with a black tip. Mbashi River buff, is a possibly extinct species of butterfly. It is assumed to be endemic to the densely forested Mbashi River area of the Eastern Cape. Searches subsequent to its discovery however failed to yield any trace of it. Marantz blue was endemic to South Africa. The species is only known from two complete male specimens. There have been no verified specimens since 1879. The undersurfaces of the complete specimens are lighter and more hoary than the closely related Lepidocrysops praetorita. The quagga was long thought to be a distinct species, but early genetic studies have supported it being a subspecies of plains zebra. A more recent study suggested that it was the southernmost cline or ecotype of the species. It was distinguished from other zebras by its limited pattern of primarily brown and white stripes, mainly on the front part of the body. The rear was brown and without stripes, and appeared more horse-like. The distribution of stripes varied considerably between individuals. After the Dutch settlement of South Africa began, the quagga was extensively hunted, as it competed with domesticated animals for forage. Some were taken to zoos in Europe, but breeding programs were unsuccessful. The last wild population lived in the Orange Free State, the quagga was extinct in the wild by 1878. The last captive specimen died in Amsterdam on 1883. Only one quagga was ever photographed alive, and only 23 skins are preserved today. In 1984, the quagga was the first extinct animal to have its DNA analyzed. The Quagga project is trying to recreate the phenotype of hair coat pattern and related characteristics by selectively breeding Birchall zebras. This quail was most likely still present in the Canary Islands after humans settled there. Cats could have been one of the causes of the disappearance of some little flying birds like the Canary Islands quail.
Delaland's kua only was known to science as an extant bird for a very short time in the early 19th century. It probably was restricted to coastal rainforest on Nosy Baraja, and its habitat was largely destroyed by deforestation in the course of the 19th century. Introduction of black rats may also have contributed to its demise, probably less by direct predation than by competition for food, but there probably was a thriving rat population on Nosy Baraja as soon as 1700, considering that the island was a favorite place for pirates to overhaul. Cats, which would have preyed on the bird, were probably introduced only in the 19th century and make a more likely candidate for an introduced species that had a negative impact on Delaland's kua. At the time of the arrival of human settlers, dense giant tortoise herds of many thousands were reported on Rodriguez. Like many island species, they were reported to have been friendly, curious, and unafraid of humans. However, in the ensuing years, massive harvesting and exporting for food, as well as the introduction of invasive species, rapidly exterminated the giant tortoises. Hundreds of thousands were loaded into ships holds for food, or to be transported to Mauritius, where they were burnt for fat and oil. A surviving giant tortoise was reported on Rodriguez in 1795, at the bottom of a ravine. As late as 1802, there is mention of survivors reportedly being killed in the large fires used to clear the island's vegetation for agriculture. Rodriguez giant de gecko was an arboreal lizard living on trees within the forests of Rodriguez. It became extinct due to human-induced deforestation and predation by introduced cats and rats. Little is known about the Newton's parakeet behavior in life, but it may have fed on the nuts of the Bois d'Olive tree, along with leaves. It was very tame and was able to mimic speech. Of the roughly eight parrot species endemic to the mascarines, only the echo parakeet has survived. The others were likely all made extinct by a combination of excessive hunting and deforestation by humans. According to early accounts praising its flavor, it appears visitors commonly ate Newton's parakeet. Several individuals would likely be needed to provide a single meal, owing to the bird's small size. Very little is known about the mascarine parrot in life. Since several specimens were kept alive in captivity, it was probably not a specialized feeder. The mascarine parrot may have once inhabited Mauritius as well based on a 17th century account by the English traveler Peter Mundy which mentioned, russet parrots. This is a possibility, since Réunion and Mauritius do share some types of animals, but no fossil evidence has yet been discovered. Many other endemic species of Réunion became extinct after the arrival of man and the resulting disruption of the island's ecosystem. It is thought that the mascarine parrot went extinct in the wild while captive specimens still survived in Europe, since specimens are known to have lived there after the last mention of wild birds. Réunion giant tortoise was endemic to Réunion Island, these giant tortoises were very friendly and had no fear of humans. They were, therefore, easy prey for the first inhabitants of the island, and were slaughtered in vast numbers to be burnt for fat and oil, or to be used as food. Large numbers were also stacked into the holds of passing ships, as food supplies for sea trips. In addition, invasive species, such as pigs, cats, and rats, destroyed the eggs and hatchlings of the giant tortoises. Coastal populations were completely decimated by the 18th century. It was presumed extinct in much of the island since 1800. The last few animals survived in the highlands until the 1840s. The hoopoe starling inhabited humid areas and marshes. It was omnivorous, feeding on plant matter and insects. The birds were hunted by settlers on Réunion, who also kept them as pets. Nineteen specimens exist in museums around the world. The hoopoe starling was reported to be in decline by the early 19th century and was probably extinct before the 1860s. 
Several factors have been proposed, including competition and predation by introduced species, disease, deforestation, and persecution by humans, who hunted it for food and as an alleged crop pest. The small Mauritian flying fox is an extinct species of megabat. It lived on the islands of Réunion and Mauritius in the Mascarene Islands. It was abundant, with up to 400 sometimes crowding together at a single roost in a cave or in an ancient, hollow tree, while most other fruit bats prefer to roost in the branches of large trees. Local people believed there was only one male per roost, which may indicate the sexes roosted separately and the large roosts were maternity colonies. This flying fox was nocturnal and had delicate teeth, so it probably fed on nectar and possibly soft fruit. As it roosted in old trees and caves, it was vulnerable to forest clearance and hunting. It probably vanished in the 19th century. The Mauritius blue pigeon probably lived in pairs or small groups in humid, mountainous evergreen forests, like their extant relatives. They probably became rarer during French rule in Mauritius, as lowland areas of the island were almost completely deforested during this time. Frugivorous birds often need a large area for foraging and move between forest types to feed on different types of food, which grow irregularly. Other blue pigeons perch on bare branches, making them vulnerable to hunters. It can be concluded that the Mauritius blue pigeon became extinct in the 1830s. Apart from habitat destruction and hunting, introduced predators, mainly crab-eating macaques, were probably also responsible. Seychelles parakeet was rare when described even in 1867. The last specimens were collected in 1881, and the last birds recorded in captivity on Silhouette in 1883. The species was extinct by 1906, it seems to have been affected by the felling of forests to make way for coconut plantations, and died out as a result of being killed by farmers protecting their maize crops. It is believed to have had a diet of insects found in the bushes or trees, and probably also consumed fruit and seeds. The once abundant Tristan Morhen had become rare by 1873, and by the end of 19th century it was extinct as a result of hunting, predation by introduced species and habitat destruction by fire. 